it's important that the less developed um, countries have a voice um, because um, this whole issue about climate change is going to have severe impacts on this developed economist, um, economies rather. Um, it's going to affect uh, many of the sectors that they rely on. Um, and these sectors are agriculture, energy, uh, forestry. Um, and um, it's also important that the least developed um, countries are able to take advantage of the opportunities um, that are going to come out of these sectors. But they're not able to do this now because climate change is going to really decimate many of their economies. Um, and it's also going to further reduce their capacity to adapt, expose them to further shocks and, and, and stresses. Um, so this is the place where they can begin to you know, make their views heard, but also make sure that their voices are heard as well. Um, I don't think it's that easy for them to get their voices heard because I think one of the main challenges that they face is the issue of climate finance, how they can um, access um, more funding um, to be able to address a number of the difficulties that I mentioned earlier. Um, and I think that um, the precedence is not very good because we've seen that much of the climate finance is not um, going to LDC countries um, mm -hmm. and so that makes a really bad precedence. Um, so I think that um, where we're talking about intended nationally determined contribution now we have to ensure um, that LDCs are able to basically articulate what they would like to do in their INDCs um, but that, that, that formulation of what they would like to do has to also be very um, strongly correlated with their development priorities. Um, so making those two things talk to each other, I think it's going to be um, quite a challenge. But um, the other thing to say is that the LDCs um, are um, front runners in that, in, that, in that sense. They are doing quite a lot already, um, even with their weak economies. They're doing quite a lot um, to address the technology gap. They're doing quite a lot to plug the information asymmetry that they face. Um, and they're doing quite a lot also in terms of just plugging the adaptation gap. So I think the space is limited. Um, I think that um, a coordinated approach in terms of speaking with one voice is important. I think partnership is also fundamentally important. They have to be able to get out of the LDC group as well and look for partners with which they have similar positions so that they can strengthen their voice. Um, but I think that um, the LDCs have become stronger over the years. We have seen better coordination. We've seen great leadership coming from the LDC presidents and people that have headed the, the LDCs. Um, and I think that they are showing that, yeah, the issues are not siloed. They can actually coordinate all of these issues. They don't have to separate development with climate change. They can talk about these two issues and talk about how the cumulative effect um, of underdevelopment and climate change impact is affecting their economies but also affecting livelihoods um, in LDC countries.